Welcome one and all across the country. Today is June 1st, 2016, and we believe this is role play call number seven. Uh, we're still waiting on our trainer, um, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and get started without him. Um, right now I have everybody unmuted. I'm starting to get a little bit of a noise factor, so unfortunately I'm going to go ahead and put it in the question and answer queue. And if you do have a question please or a comment, please hit star six and then hit one. I'm going to go ahead and put it in question and answer. Okay, guys, who has something they need help with, a place you're getting stuck? Um, we were having a little discussion before the call about, um, uh, I, I'm not sure who that was, the gentleman in Florida, maybe if you would hit star six and hit one, we could start with you. We could work on that a little bit. Um, he was mentioning in his market by the time, there you are, thank you. Is that you, the phone number ending in 2000? Yes, that is, and it's California. I'm Southern California. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. And, wh and what's your name? Bob Faust. Oh, of course, Bob. Yep, you are, you're a, uh, a frequent contributor to the call, and you're, you're doing very well. You're doing very well with the attorneys, correct? You've really been marketing I to the attorneys? That's probably 80% of my focus uh, okay. is getting to the attorneys. Bob, if you would, go ahead and, and repeat for the whole group what the challenge you had, and maybe you and I and Tim can role play it a bit. Uh, well, one of the other participants and I were talking before the meeting started, and, and uh, we were talking about making the phone call and sending the emails out, and I told him to send in the mail out. I basically have found that I need to be on as soon as I get my list of uh, candidates from you guys. I have to drop everything else, get on it right away, uh, get my letters to get get it sent out by mailbox moderator by you guys to get it quick, and get it out there because many times I'd say a dozen different people that I've talked to on the phone have told me, uh, "Oh man, this is the twentieth letter I got." Yeah, I don't yeah. know which letter you are. Well, I've got twenty of them. And All right. It, it so put me in the frame of mind that, oh, wow, there's other ways to get these people's names than the way you do it, and there are people getting there ahead of us. So we need to be sooner, come to the party a little sooner, and, and I just do it by saying, okay, it's the number one priority for me when, whenever I get your list. And to, to answer that, and then let's do the role play mode, there really, in most cases, there isn't any other way to get them, but – what I had said before the call, Bob, is I suspect that there are investors that are maybe going to the courthouse every day, and maybe they're getting there just a little bit before you are with you know with your monthly deliveries. So, um, role play that with me. That um, um, I'll, I'll call I'll call you, Bob. So ring ring. Hello. Hey, is this Bob? Yeah, this is Bob. Uh, who are you? Hey, it's Jim with ABC Realty, Bob. Um, I noticed from the court, you know, the county records that it appears you're the executor of an estate in Florida. Is that, is that correct? Uh, well, it's California. <laughs> in California. But, uh, Sorry about that. So you moved it. You moved oh, to you California. Want me to move to Florida, but I'm staying in California. <laughs> Thank you very much. All right. Well, I, I got you. So I meant California, Bob. Thank you for correcting me, but you are the executor. <laughs> okay. of the, no, I'm, yeah, I'm not, uh, I'm the executor of this estate, but uh, you know, I've got a lot of different letters. So I don't know uh, what letter you're talking about. Yeah, I had sent one recently. If you if you got a bunch of letters, Bob, I'll bet it's probably with 25 uh, investors just looking to steal your property, right? Uh, not all of them. I we'd get some real estate agents, but yeah, there's a high percentage of investors who are wanting to give us a quick cash, a quick buyout, and we're not interested in that kind of thing. So so it sounds like what you're telling me, Bob, is you either have people. Investors looking to buy the house for you know fifty cents on the dollar, or you got realtors wanting to tie you up with the six month listing, right? Yeah, I suppose I suppose that's what they're after. I I just uh, you know it's just kind of surprised me. Here we are uh, trying to deal with family situation, and and we're just getting all kinds of uh, activity. People sure in on our door. Yeah, and believe me, I do understand it's a difficult time for the family, Bob. And honestly, that's why. I decided to specialize in helping people that have inherited property. And if and when you get a chance, or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll send you another letter. But take a look at my letter 
I think that the value in what I offer, what my team offers is we can offer you both the investor option and trying to get closer to market value. You know, we've got, we do have an investor, you know, if you decide you do want a quick sale. In the meantime, we've got an estate liquidation company that'll come in there and buy your valuables. We've got a junk out company that can, you know, get rid of any clutter or debris, make the house show as well as possible. And we've got a contractor that can come in and, you know, and, and if you're really looking to get top dollar for the house. And the good news, Bob, if you decide to go ahead and list and try to get more for the property, when you list with me, you're not really tying the property up because any time during the listing period, you know, that investor offer would still be on the table. So th does, that, does that make a little bit more sense to you to kind of try to keep your options open and, and see what, what works out best for you in the other areas? Um. Well, I think I think you misled me there a little. Uh, if you if I sign a listing with you, I don't have an option for an all cash investor. Outside well, no, no. What I'm saying is I do have an investor. So if you went ahead and listed with me, and your situation changes, that investor offer would still be on the table. Oh, okay, okay. So, so you know, you're not you're not um, you you know you would have that quick sale option. But you'd also have the possibility of getting in the MLS and trying to get closer to what the property is actually worth. Right. Well, we so haven't so decided. Our family, we've got uh, there's three of us, br two brothers and a sister, and uh, I'm I'm the one in charge. But of course, I have to uh, work with the other siblings to try sure. to find out what we want to do, and we just haven't pushed past that envelope yet of what what we really want to do with the property. Absolutely, and you you obviously have to do. Um, you know, best what's what's best for you in the other areas, Bob. You know, I'd be glad to schedule a short conference call and kind of go through all the options with all the heirs, and you know, maybe I can take some of that stress and responsibility off your plate, and you know, come up with a family consensus. Is there is there a time that all that you and the other two heirs and I could get together, do a quick 10, 15 minute call? What 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 time of day normally works better for you, like afternoons or evenings? Well. Uh for me, I'm available pretty much any time, but I gotta, I, I'm, I'm going to have to get a hold of the others to see now, what's best for them, whether they want to do it during their work hours or evenings. Uh, okay. Uh, most perfect. likely want to do evenings after work. All right, perfect. Are any of you in California? Are you all scattered around the country? No, we're all, we're all right here in California. Oh, okay, that's even better then. We can meet out at the house one, one, you know, one night this week. I have Wednesday night, like 6 o'clock, or Friday open, just tentatively. Which one do you think would work better for you? Uh, Friday's better for me, but I think I'm, I, I I can't say that that's okay with my siblings. All right, no problem, Bob. And you know, no pressure. I'm going to go ahead and pencil you in for six o'clock on Friday, and then I'll check back with you tomorrow and just see if that works for for you and the other heirs. Fair enough? Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> All right, great. And by the way, while I was doing that, Chad came on the line. Chad, how would you handle that differently, or what else would you say? I would have done nothing differently. You nailed that. So you, you eased in, started the conversation, differentiated yourself, and showed him how you can give even more of a benefit because you've got option A and B rolled into one solution, and he can always fall back on that cash offer in your desk drawer. And <clears throat> making him commit to a tentative appointment, like that's something that, you know, most people want to say, well, i got to talk to my brother, talk to my sister. If you can get them to a tentative appointment, they'll never cancel. So you, at, at a minimum, set it as a tentative appointment and give them permission to cancel so they feel like they have control, and it helps them get past that, you know, that objection that, you know, that they had because they might not quite trust what you're saying just yet. I, I wouldn't have done anything differently. I think that was perfect. All right, excellent. Minimum, Bob, you, you need. I think you need to start asking them uh, right away, uh, or either ask or just, you know, like I just say, hey, you know, so you probably got 20 offers from investors that are willing to take the property off your hands for half price, right? <laughs> you know, well, just kinda... That's my takeaway item from today's call is that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm, I'm going to try to pin them down and, and get them to dismiss most of those as uh, uh, investors who will lowball them. And then yeah. I'll try to do better for them. So I, All right. I think it's a good way to approach that when that subject comes up. Excellent, Bob. You always uh, you always contribute to these calls, even if you did move from California from Florida to California. That's okay. <laughs> yeah, we'll hold, you're right. <laughs> we won't hold you back against you. Great, great way to start the call. Um, 
who else? There, there's a ton of people on today. We've probably got about 25 people. Who else has a place that they're getting stuck or, or something they'd like to role play with the group? Anybody? Start, hit star six and hit one. While, y'all are, while you're thinking about it, um, Chad and I discussed this week, um, and if you've been on the mastermind calls lately, um, you're, you're aware, maybe some of you haven't been, that we've really been talking about the maybe 10 to 20% of the people that you call and they say, well, I already sold the real estate. You know, we, we had to sell it to get mom and dad in the, in the hospice or the, you know, the, the facility. Or they say, no, there was, you know, there's a bunch of assets, but there's no real estate involved in the transaction. So I think that might be a good thing. Um, and he, who wants to role play that? Oh, we have, we have a person in the queue, and you're, you're up next. But, Chad, you want to role play that with me? Or does anybody, any other volunteers hit star six and hit one? Chad, do you want to be the agent or you want me to? <clears throat> yeah, I'll be the agent. That's fine. All right. So you, you call me this time, and I've got real estate that I already and, – and, guys, before we start this, the tendency is to just hang up and say, oh, you already sold the real estate. Okay, great. Congratulations. Thanks anyway. Goodbye. So we, we want to try to um, show you some benefit to ask him some extra questions. So go ahead, Chad. You be the agent and call me. Ring, ring. Hello, this is Jim. Hey, Jim, this is Chad Corbett from ABC Realty. I sent you a letter last week. I just wanted to take a chance to, to follow up and make sure you got that and you understood why we reached out. Yeah, I appreciate it, Chad. You you were the agent, right, that had all those – had four or five different solutions and you helped people that inherited property. No, it was a great letter. Um, but I, I appreciate the call, but we already sold the property. We actually – we sold it as soon as we put Dad into the nursing home about a month ago. So it's already sold and closed. Okay. Well, good for you guys. I mean, I, if you don't mind my asking, did you did you get what you thought it was worth? Do you, do you feel like you, you know? Uh, I, I, I think we probably got about 90% of what it was worth, but we, we needed a quick sale. So my, my two sisters, my brother and I, we we're all, we were all happy with the way it turned yeah. out. Well, that's great. I'm glad it worked out for you. Well, listen, Jim, there's, as you kind of saw in the letter that we sent, we, you know, we are real estate professionals, but there's a lot of different ways we help families. And what we found over time is, you know, about 80% of most fam- the wealth in most families is held in the real estate. And once that's sold, you know, we were kind of, I mean, frankly, dropping the ball by just letting people go on their way. And we, we really kind of stepped back and took a look at our business and said, how can we continue to provide value to you know, to those clients? And even though we didn't sell your house, it, it still applies to your situation. Um, part of our team is, you know, we have financial planners, estate planners, <clears throat> people that can help, you know, future generations preserve wealth and even reinvest that wealth and go as far as put together an estate sale plan so your your family never has to go through this again. But anyway, there's, there's, it really starts with us understanding kind of where you are today now that the home is sold and you've got liquid assets and seeing if there's any way we can help you with those. And, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, Jim, we're not going to get paid on most of those, but I'm, I'm a firm believer in, you know, paying it forward. And if sometimes you see value in what we do, I'm sure that you'll have referrals to send us, you know, or we'll you know, help I, you buy a home or even build, a, build an investment portfolio. Sure. Well, I really appreciate you saying that. You know, it's funny you should say that because uh, I just paid my house off, and my wife and I were talking last night with the extra 150000 that we got out of this estate. You know, I've, I've always wanted a boat and to get a house on the lake, so we're, we're actually thinking about selling our house and upgrading and getting something on the lake and maybe buying a boat. So, you know, I have no idea what my house is worth. Could you, could you give me an idea what it's worth? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we, um, we look at houses on – Fridays and Mondays. I have one spot on Friday if you want. Maybe All right. can you do three o'clock? I'll be over at three on Friday. I'm going to be really easy. <laughs> okay. they, they Listen, won't... I've got a. There's a guy in my my B and I group that's a a boat broker, and he <laughs> sometimes buys stuff off of you know the government auction. Yep. If you want, I can connect you with him too, and maybe we can get you a great deal on a boat too. Oh, that'd be awesome. I appreciate it. Cool. Well, I will, I'll see you guys at uh, on Friday at three o'clock. Hey, real quick before I go, let me ask you a few questions so I can do my homework. So, sure. Now that I got the appointment, I'm not going to go through it here, but I would just get the details on the home so I could do you know a proper market absorption analysis, and then meet with Jim. 
when I went on that appointment, I would dive a little bit deeper into how we can use leverage instead of spending the whole 150 grand. Maybe we can get you into an 80% LTV loan for the house, carve out a little bit for the boat, and then get you to my financial advisor to invest the rest. So I would, I would go, you know, I would want to dig a little deeper on the details of the house. And as I build rapport doing that, I would dig a little deeper on what your plans are for the 150,000. Perfect. And, and you know, if you have, if you have other money to put with that, so I can kind of determine your budget for the next house. Perfect. And you know, you could just, you could even consolidate that. That was great because you're giving them a menu of services, but you really could even. It, it, it depends on the person on the other li end of the line. You can tell if they want to talk or not. If they're talkative and they're receptive, I think that's a great approach. If they're, you know, if they seem like, you know, they just want you to get to the point, I mean, you could just, you know, say something like, well, you know, Chad, we, we, um, we've run into quite a few other people that in that same situation, they've already sold the property. And, you know, it, it, one thing we noticed is that often when people, you know, inherit a significant amount of money, the, the first thing they think about is maybe – selling their house and upgrading or maybe buying some investment property. Have you given any thought to that? You know, maybe lead with the real estate question. And if he says no, no, then you can always throw in the financial advisor people. Th the beauty of this is there's no set script. It's, it's asking good questions and really being concerned for how can you help them. But just remember, you're, you're talking to somebody on average that just inherited $175,000. If they're local, now, if, they're, if you're in Pittsburgh and they're in Miami, then, you know, chances are you're not going to be able to help them buy or sell something else. But especially if you notice that the executor is local, it's worth asking those extra couple questions. Um, I don't know what percentage, but my guess would be at least a third to maybe half of the people that inherit a significant amount of money are going to probably going to upgrade the house they live in or buy some investment property, maybe both. So just asking those extra couple extra questions can – you know, you're you're talking to people that inherited significant money and it's found money, and and you know, you're doing them a favor if you get them to uh, buy a house before they go before they go blow it on just a boat. <laughs> you know, both are, both are good. Um, uh, Tim had to jump off, and we we do have someone else in the queue, so I appreciate it. And we got time, guys, probably for three, four, or five more of these. So please, um, if anything you want to discuss or role play with us, hit star six and then hit one. And the next person up is phone number ending in 6266. Um, yes, this is Shannon Bordelana, and this is my first time on this call. And I was wondering if there's recordings. I see that the mastermind recordings are in the Facebook group, but I, where do I find these role play calls? Because I think they're really good. Oh, thank you. Um, <clears throat> the easiest way to get them to kind of come to the top, they are archived in Facebook for right now in the group. If you go into all the leads mastermind into the group and then in the top in the search bar on the top right. I just search probate. Just no, that would bring up a lot. If you just search role play, it oh, will bring role up, play. Okay. Yeah. It'll bring up all the calls and as soon as we're done with this one, I'll post it probably within the hour. Okay. Yeah, because I was just seeing all the calls for the mastermind. I wasn't seeing I went back the whole month. Um, I think this should yeah, be our the only the only thing that came up is someone on December seventh said, "Can someone send me a link to a role play call?" And that's the only one that's in there when I did role play hmm. from December seventh, two thousand fifteen. They're all mastermind calls. There's not role play calls. Well, we have them recorded. We'll 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 find it and. Um, yeah, and then like probably this week we're rolling over to the new website. And it's going to have an actual call archive section, so everything oh, okay. will, everything will be in one place. So just bear with us. Within the next ten days, I'm sure you'll okay. be able to search by month all the way back to two years ago. You'll and, and each month each month you'll see both the role play and the mastermind calls in one place. Yeah, I just think that the role plays are good because that's what we need to be doing and to hear how we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> <laughs> Especially, so we could practice on our own. You know? Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, hey, while, while you're in the hot seat, do you want to role play? I don't want to. I, I don't know my stuff, so I don't. Wanna, I don't so want to role play. I haven't read enough stuff. <laughs> Is there anything Thank you, you want? 
Shannon, is there any anything that in the few calls that you've done, is there anything that's come up that you would like to? No, I haven't even done any calls. I haven't even done oh, any calls. Okay. I'm new to the group, so I'm very Got unprepared. It. So I, I joined in the middle, and I was like, I don't want to call anybody until I hear how I'm supposed to do it. <laughs> well, speaking about new to the group, our newest subscriber, Craig, is is up. has a question next. So thank you. Thank you, Shannon, for okay, sharing. Thanks. And we'll, we'll let Craig take a shot. Craig, you're up, sir. Fire away. Hey, Jim. Hey, Welcome. Thank you, thank you. Uh, so yeah, the question that I had was just in building um, relationships with uh, state attorneys, not necessarily if you have a specific case uh, with them, like you know where a lead that came in, but uh, I won't get my leads until the 16th of this month. And I thought in the meantime, maybe I could reach out to some of state attorneys and start trying to build relationships and figure out how that how what would be ways in which I could add value to their business. Um, so I wanted to get some advice on that. Great question. Chad, you want to, um, Craig, you want to be the attorney and I'll put Chad on the spot. Chad, do you want to, sure, you want to, sure. you want to call, call him as an agent calling an attorney? And this is an estate attorney, not a probate attorney, right? Uh, I think yes. he had probate, right? Yeah. Uh, kind of for conversations. I did say estate. Um, let's do. So, well, let's, let's let's do this. So so this is true to your business right now. You don't have a probate list, so you would be calling the estate attorneys first because you don't necessarily know who the probate attorneys are yet, since you don't have your list. Correct. Um, and if you want to back up and do the probate attorney, we can do that. But let's go with the estate attorney, and I'll kind of show you some ways right now, even before you get your list, you can start building some referral lines. Sounds great. Ring, ring. Hello? Hi, is this Craig? Yep, this is uh, this is Craig. Who is this? Hey, Craig. My name is Chad Corbin. I'm a local real estate agent with ABC Realty. And uh, I was reaching out today because I noticed you were a member of, of one of the elder attorney foundations, and it looks like you do estate planning. Is that right? I do. Okay. Well, we have found that there's a big need in the marketplace for, for a real estate professionals to really help families navigate probate and, and kind of the end of life. Um, and what we've also learned there is that that, that skill set translates back even, you know, even before a death occurs. So, you know, from get, helping people get home so quickly to helping them get the personal property cleaned out and the assets sold so they can afford long-term care and even setting up estate plans, we are you know, exposed to more and more families every day that are kind of going through that transition period. And I just wanted to introduce myself and kind of let you know that there's an agent right here in your backyard that's probably doing something you didn't expect um, and see if there's any way we might be able to help each other. Um, I can certainly uh, take down your information and, and keep you in mind. Normally I uh, normally I don't like to uh, I, I let the uh, the people pick the the real estate agent. I don't really get involved in that process, but I'll I'll certainly keep your information. I understand. So you're not currently referring them to a specific agent. Do you feel like that just by letting them go to the general marketplace, that's the best thing you can do for them, or can you see how we might be able to help them better than just letting them, you know, let the chips fall where they may? Um, I see how there can be a benefit if you have special training and special skills. Um, I just, you know, I'm talking to you for the first time and don't really know a whole lot about you, so I really wouldn't feel comfortable referring you business at this point. Well, I understand that completely. I can appreciate that. So what I'd like to do, I mean, if, if I can maybe grab, you know, buy you a cup of coffee or, or, or grab lunch one day this week, I know your time's valuable, but, uh, if, if we could meet up, I, I mean, I'm less than a mile from your office. Um, just kind of chat about some of the things that, that we can do to help you. Um, like I said, we, we come into contact with families kind of in all stages of this transition. One of the things we really focus on is once the real estate is sold from a probate, we try to make sure those families have an estate plan in place for the next time so they don't have to go through the pain and headache and expense of probate. And I see that really as, the, you know, the, one of the biggest values we can bring to you is we can hand you, as we finish those probate transactions, we can, you know, send them to you to help set up the estate plan for future generations. So 
it, you know, I'm, I'm really looking for a long-term relationship here where I help you, you help me, and, and we'll build that trust over time. So, so I mean, it's, it's, how about Friday afternoon we'll grab a cup of coffee at, at Starbucks? Uh, yeah, that sounds good. I got 20 minutes on Friday. Okay. How about how about 2:30? Uh, sure, 2:30 it is. Okay, so I'll see you down there at 2:30. I'll be the tallest guy in the room with no hair, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll we'll, uh, we'll chat about how we might be able to help each other out here. And by the way, I have, All right, to, that I, sounds... have I have to comment, Craig. That was an incredibly real role play because that you do hear that if you get through to the attorney, you hear that a lot. That Agents think that attorneys have these people that they just automatically send leads to, and the prevailing sentiment with attorneys that 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 our agents talk to is that yeah they are really reluctant. They don't you know they do what they do. They don't want it to reflect badly on them if you know if the agent doesn't do a good job. And you guys have heard probably too many times me me mention uh, Paul Hayhurst up in Orlando, Florida, where his first first set of mailings he got three listings same attorney and he, he had that exact same conversation that you and chad just had and the attorney said nah you know i don't i don't like to stick my neck out and he said okay well if you don't mind i'm going to send you an email he couldn't even get in the door he sent him an email um sent him some information and then on the deals that he had with that with that particular attorney he just overwhelmed him with service and i think after the second one closed the attorney called him and said you know, you're really making my job easier here. You've you've proven yourself. You know, I'm going to go ahead and start referring uh, deals to you. And I know Paul still gets one or two deals a month from our leads, and he's getting twice as many from one attorney that he made friends with in the beginning. So Chad and, has said one thing Chad has mentioned many times before, too, and it, and it really holds true. These attorneys get paid a set fee. They don't bill by the hour. The vast, maybe vast majority of time, they're you know it's twenty five hundred, three thousand, five thousand dollars to get the probate done. So, the the quicker you can make that happen, and the more you can take off their plate, the bigger an incentive they're going to have in the future to to give you more business. And and that's why we always recommend um, reach out to the executor first, get the property listed. Um, there's certainly nothing wrong with prospecting. Bob Faust in California will tell you he's done phenomenally well just uh, prospecting the attorneys but it, it just realize it's more of a long-term relationship it's going to take you a while to build that trust and that was an incredibly uh good role play craig because that is exactly right they don't trust you the first time you call them you know you're just yeah. you're just so that i i think that went really well um the, well, the other question i had regarding that is part of the trick i would imagine is getting through to the attorney and, and through the gatekeeper uh, yep. would be one aspect that would be probably an obstacle as well. well let's, sure. let's, roll, let's roll through an, a, a, an actual probate attorney call then because we have kind of a, 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 a trick to help you do that. Okay. So, so do I have a case? I, we have a mutual client or are you calling on a specific case or something like that? I'm going to just to get through your gatekeeper. So Jim, oh, okay. you, Jim, you can be the gatekeeper. You're, you're the uh, paralegal today. Um, <laughs> So I'm, I'm going to call. Jim's going to answer. Craig, you're the attorney. Okay. So ring, ring. Hey, uh, Bob Johnson, attorney at law. Hey, I'm, I'm, this is Chad Corbin. I'm a real estate agent. I'm working with the, the, the estate of Jane Doe. The docket number is 378-497. I was trying to reach Craig. I'm not sure of his last name, but is there an attorney in your firm that handles probate files named Craig? Yeah, there sure is. Craig Kincaid, yep. Okay. Could you uh, connect us, please? Yeah. Now, which which case is this regarding? I'm I'm his paralegal, Jim. It's uh, the estate of Jane Doe. The docket number is eight seven nine four five three. Eight seven nine five four. Yeah, that is Craig's. Okay. I'm gonna go ahead and put you through. If he if he doesn't answer, you can go ahead and leave him a voicemail. Okay. Thanks, Jim. Boom. Yeah. Really. The the, so the key. That, is that's how. You get through the gatekeeper. It's if you're sending letters, if you're sending emails, something that Bob Faust, you know, we talked about on last week's mastermind. If you can merge in the case, you know, the, the deceased first and last name and the docket number, that's all it's in the data we provide you guys. You can do a mail merge into either the email subject line or into your letter. 
and it's going to formalize that call, and you'll be way more likely to get past that gatekeeper and to the probate attorney. Yeah, you, you and, sound a, you sound a lot more like somebody with a specific uh, purpose or question regarding that case than a than a you know a telemarketer who's trying to sell them some product or service. It, it, yeah. It, it, yeah, it does improve your odds significantly. Good. Any yeah. good job, Greg? Uh, thank you for contributing to the call. We're right at just over 30 minutes, and I, I don't see any more questions in the queue. Um, Last chance, star six, and hit one. If anybody else says anything else they want to go over. I think this was a good call. Um, anything you want to say in summary? Uh, oh, we got one more. All right, hang on a second. We got one more. You are up. Uh, phone number ending in 6266. Hi, this is Shannon calling again. And Okay, on that lawyer role play, he was just trying to set up a meeting, but he hadn't worked with them. And I don't understand how you can be giving them leave if you're working on probates and those people have already been working with a lawyer. So well, the role play that we did was an estate planning attorney, which is much different than a probate oh, attorney. Oh, okay, okay, all right. That makes sense. We were, like, we were how is that working? Okay, okay, <laughs> I understand now. I was, I was lost there. Okay, I understand. All right, thanks. So that appointment was to set up a long-term referral lines, and we, you know, I led with value, saying, "Hey, I'm going to bring you referrals." And I haven't right. asked him, for, I haven't asked him for anything in return. I'll do that once we've had coffee and built rapport. And then eventually that will help me get in front of the probate situation and it will help me get into trust situations that never go through probate because okay. a good estate planning attorney will nine times out of 10 use a living trust and we will never see that on our probate list. So that's one of the ways that you can kind of organically get in front of the probate process and, and become, you know, the agent and the trust sales. Okay, I see. Because when I was looking in my area, I was noticing that a lot of probate lawyers also do estate planning. They do. Um, some. So that's know, why I was. That's why I was confused. Yeah. All right, guys. Great call. Chad and I have to get on another one in about 15 minutes, but um, we actually have a webinar for people that are not in our system yet. But I, I really appreciate everybody that took the time to show up today. Um, I, I guess the couple themes to take away from this is uh, we started with talking about the value of asking the extra question, you know, uh, especially if you know that they don't have real estate, but come from a place of service and how can you help them ask that question now that the estate is settled, you know, do you have plans to upgrade your home or buy any investment property? And then uh, we closed with the attorney, you know, the value of reaching out to the attorney on a specific probate or in an estate situation. Chad, anything you want to say in summary? No, I think it was a great call. I mean, those are things that aren't necessarily taught in our training, but we work with a lot of agents on the side, like on just how to get the most out of this list. And it really boils down to kind of a provide value first mindset and asking good questions to really differentiate yourself from those other 30 investors and, and, and you know, the realtors that if aren't yet competitors will be someday. So uh, I think it was a great call, some really good topics. Excellent. We will talk to you all. Hopefully you all show up for the mastermind call tomorrow and be just as uh, as receptive and, uh, and contributing as you were today. Appreciate you taking the time. We will talk to you at 1 o'clock tomorrow, guys. Have a great day. Take care.